Welcome back to New Am Sam Radio, the podcast for creatives. It is I, the mayor, Flobo Boys, in the mayor's office, and I'm hanging with those who create for passion, for fun, and more. My guest, Jacqueline Ivy, has a list of books that will knock your socks off. Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining the show today. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Well, let's get right into it. We're, we're talking just before you went live, and, and you're over there in Florida. I'm over here in Los Angeles, but it's always funny how the power of the written word brings us all together, right? That is true. <laughs> so when did you decide that writing was a passion that you wanted to go down? I'm sorry? When did you decide that writing was the, the passion that you wanted to, the path you wanted to follow? I guess when I started teaching school, <clears throat> I was teaching school and I was te teaching English. And uh, some of the things I was teaching the students, um, I would write on the board to assist them. And uh, I started writing some for myself so that I could share with the students to see how it was done. And as a result, I, I had a compilation of poems that I had written over the years. And uh, when my husband passed away, uh, it was cathartic to be able to write about him and my love for him. So I added to that compilation by writing about him. Yeah. Well, that's actually a question I had for later on. Uh, we talked about, uh, for most authors in the show, about taking real life or making that into your work or being inspired by real life events. I mean, it must have been very difficult to decide to, to put that pen to paper uh, in the wake of that tragic event. It was difficult. It took me several years uh, to get to the point that I could really write about it. Hmm. Well, I, I'm so thankful that you're able to, to push through. Thank you. So am I. Let's talk about the your book, Original Poems and Memoirs. I thought yes. the combination was kind of interesting, having some of the nonfiction and some of the creative works together in the same collection. Yes, this is what I had reference to originally. Um, I was teaching students uh, to write poetry and different kinds of poetry and incorporating different elements into that poetry using uh, figurative language, such as personifications, um, similes, metaphors, hyperboles, um, and uh, different kinds of poems as well. So we started out by writing something very simple and I'd put one line on the board and they would add another line uh, to the poem and we continued until we got um, a verse. And uh, then they had that assignment and at the end, they were responsible for turning in a poetry notebook with the various poems we had written or they had written with. And they also had to include uh, illustrations of those poems they had written. That sounds like a lot of fun, but I remember when I was in creative writing class, I was the kid being like, oh, miss, I don't know if I'm creative. Like, how did, how did you uh, uh, coax some of the more shy ones to put pen to paper? Yes, it was very difficult for some of them at first. Then they got the hang of it and they found it to be a lot of fun. I was told about some parents later on after these children had moved on uh, to uh, higher classes that uh, they were asking the teachers, when are we going to do the unit on poetry? Because they liked it that much. Well, that's was a good sign for a educator, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so about the memoir side uh, of your book, uh, you know, a life is just a collection of experiences and memories, good and bad. How'd you go about deciding which ones made the cut, which ones you're going to hold off for a potential oh, second the ones book? I Yes, the ones I liked best were those that were humorous to me. Uh, these were about my children for the most part. They would say funny things. Uh, they would do uh, uh, funny things. And those are the ones that I included. I hope others will find it funny or humorous, humorous as I did. So um, I put those in there. Uh, uh, I recall my son was about three years old. And I had taught him his prayers and 
uh, he was listening to everyone say the blessing at night when we were eating. And he thought that we were saying, God is good. God is, no, God is great. God is good. Let us spank him for this food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And we were saying thank. He thought we said spank. That was one uh, memoir that's in there. The whole story is there. Yeah. And another is uh, my uh, son, who's a bit older than he, uh, always thought that he was an uh, entomologist or something of that nature. Uh, he loved being outside and catching um, squirrels and taking care of birds and um, taking care of uh, ants. They even had an ant farm. So I have written about what happened to him when he got involved with the uh, with the uh, the bird. That's one, and also uh, when he was trying to catch something outside, and uh, a bee or a wasp stung him uh, in the forehead. Oh no! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess being a mom's job is never done. Right? No, never. <laughs> well, talk to me more about the nitty gritty, right? The process uh, of actually writing. Sometimes things come easy. Sometimes they don't. Are you a morning riser? Are you a late writer? Do you beta test? Do you write, complete the, the work and then show the people? How do you put things together? I come up with an idea, uh, and it usually has to do with my feelings. Um, I think about my husband, uh, my mother, and uh, experiences that I've had, and I come up with um, maybe a theme, uh, and sometimes I compare what I feel to what I see in nature sometimes. And I put one line down and I think of something else that I can add to that. Of course, if it's and a rhyme, then I want the last word to rhyme with the first sure. um, uh, and a rhyme. And uh, I continue um, in that manner. Yeah. And, and do you write when the inspiration strikes? Like, oh, that'd be great. Or do you set time aside during your day and go, look, three o'clock to five o'clock, don't knock on my door. Don't no. call me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that. You know, I had the pleasure and or pain, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> of writing my, my first memoir a couple of years ago. It was called uh -huh. Ironically Graduation Day because, you know, you're an educator. <laughs> yeah. It was called Graduation Day. And there were some days I'm like, oh, man, that'd be great that'd be great let's go back and edit and there were just other days and i was like i just do not want to see my writing i don't want to read my writing <laughs> <laughs> that was a constant battle yeah <laughs> yes well sometimes i write something and later on i'll think of something better um and i'll change it um and i do that quite often yeah when do people get to join in on the editing process? When everything's done? Or do you have like beta readers and ask for their opinions? No, I don't ask for anyone's opinion. <laughs> it's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I started writing and um, when my husband passed, I would uh, honor uh, him uh, on his, um, on the day that he passed away mm -hmm. and on his birthday. And someone had told me, why don't you write a book? Because these are so good. So that's how I got started. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I totally understand that. Uh, sometimes you don't want so many opinions ruining the, the work or anything. But hey, 11 five-star reviews on Amazon can't be wrong, right? It definitely seems that people are enjoying. I hope not. <laughs> the collection. <laughs> Is there a sequel on the horizon? I know I'm just probably much stirring the pot here. but I'm sorry? Would you write a sequel to, to Books of Original Poems and Memoirs? Um, I'm not inspired at this time, but it, I could okay. uh, eventually. Yeah, it's something I could think about. Yeah. 
shifting gears a bit, uh, you have another collection, uh, another book, The Great Depression, one about yes. mental health. And yes. uh, mental health is really one of those things where everyone says it's important, but we all go through our struggles and we try to, to reconcile the best way to navigate. What was your experience that led you to decide to write this book? I wanted to be helpful to others. I'd heard so much about mental health recently, uh, people taking their own lives, uh, and I wanted them to know you don't have to do that. I went through it. It's difficult enough. You get through it, but you don't get over it, and that was what I want others to know. It was a very uh, hard time for me. Um, I didn't realize that I had a propensity for depression until I was experiencing it. Um, my husband discovered he had diabetes when he was 50, and um, I had relatives who had diabetes. And it was difficult uh, for my aunt, uh, whose daughter had uh, responsibility of taking care of her and she had to make the unpleasant decision to have her mother's leg amputated mm -hmm. and I kept thinking I don't want to make that decision for my husband it started there and every time he got sick er over something uh, I kept thinking do I have to make that decision um, and so it was um most difficult time uh, for me. And uh, each time he got another illness, I wondered, will he still be with me? I loved him so much and I can't imagine life without him. Mm -hmm. I was sure that God had plucked him from his pasture to give him to me. And uh, I had left home to go to college we were at the same university, Florida A&M in um, Tallahassee. And then uh, we got married. And so he was the only one that I'd really known mm -hmm. and had only loved as I had. So how could I go on without him? Mm -hmm. And that's what I kept thinking. And so every time something went wrong, I thought, is this the last time that I'll have um, an opportunity to be with him. And it got to the point that I couldn't handle it anymore. Um, I started to have palpitations. Um, I would have butterflies in my stomach. Uh, I started to cry. Um, I um, had blisters um, that popped up on my hands that looked like bubble wrap. Mm. Um, my pressure went so high, the doctors thought I was going to have a stroke. My head started to hurt. I started to regurgitate uh, uncontrollably. Um, I was afraid to go to, well, I was happy to go to work, but I was afraid to come home because I thought I might lose my husband that night. Right. I, it was the most miserable and difficult thing that I have ever experienced in my life. Yeah. So that's how I went into deep depression. And that's how the uh, title came about, The Great Depression. Yeah. Uh, and what helped me was eventually um, when I could read again, because I was at the point my attention span was so short I couldn't read a Bible, I couldn't watch television, I couldn't hold a conversation with anyone. I was able to eventually watch television and I watched only Christian broadcasting. And I had a friend who gave me a book that was called God's Promises. And I started reading that book when I could read again. Um, and I started learning scripture and applying it to my life. So that along with saying, a psychiatrist mm -hmm. uh, enabled me to return. And eventually I re went back to school as a teacher after three weeks of um, difficult depression. Yeah, three weeks, it's still 
Commendable. Wow, that's good. That's yeah, it worked me with me um, untiringly uh, mm -hmm. because I'm not being braggadocious, but this is what I was told. We saw that you were smart and wanted to get out of it. And I did want to get out of it because I was miserable. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat. I mean, when my husband would offer food to me, it was like eating sawdust. I had no appetite and I was losing weight. Uh, so uh, anyway, it took three weeks, but it would have taken longer if they hadn't worked with me so tirelessly. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a good thing that you were in an environment that was helpful. I know a lot of yes. people who struggle with mental health I'm don't have that support. Yeah. Yes. And and so you, you wrote the book and 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 it's out available now. Uh, have you gotten any feedback from people that that said that your book helped them through their own journeys? I've I had reviews written about the book and people have told me that the book uh has helped because they were recognizing the symptoms and uh the scriptures are very helpful too. Uh, yeah. And hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they won't get into the depths of uh, depression as I did. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned uh, Florida A&M, go Rattlers. Uh, yes. <laughs> what's it like being a Florida original? Has some of your upbringing seeped into some of your work as well? What is, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Some of your upbringing, some of your experiences in college and your life, how was exactly is being a Florida original seeped into your work, if at all? Um, it's fun. I was born in Florida. Um, and I went to A&M and it was fun being there. The first year that I was there, I'd never seen snow before anywhere because um when we had traveled outside uh, of Florida, there was no snow where we were. Mm -hmm. And I got to see snow for the very first time. Um, and we were in the dorm and uh, we'd ask the uh, matron if we could go outside. It was at night and we were given permission. And I went out there and played in the snow as did others with no gloves on, with my bare <laughs> hands. And the following day, the snow was still there and it was still very cold. And I wrote on the hill, Mark and Jacqueline. The, the Mark was my, would have been my husband after we married. We were just students and uh, good friends and um, boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. Without gloves, I wrote that. We had gone to the uh, movies that Friday night and uh, my hands started to ache so badly that I started to cry. So we had to leave the movie. I had made the mistake the night that I had played in the snow with bare hands. I went into the restroom and washed my hands trying to warm them up with hot water, oh. which was a big mistake. Now, I have arthritis in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun at the time. Yeah, yeah, it's got to go for it. As someone who grew up in Brooklyn, I'm over seeing snow ever again. But I understand <laughs> the, first <time. laughs> the first time I saw it. I went crazy. So uh, I got to say, thank you so much for being and joining us on New Amsterdam Radio. But before we get out of here, there are some questions we ask all our guests. Kind of like a yeah. fun little game. Nothing too crazy. Are you down to play today? Okay, yes. Okay. <laughs> what would you say is on your travel bucket list? Where would you want to go visit? Uh, um, what's left would be um, Israel. Uh, not at this time, though. Um, that's the one that I'd really love to visit. That's the only one I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of uh, traveling Um up to this point. So that's yeah. the one that's left on the list. Yeah. Uh, everyone kind of collects something. What would you say you collect? Oh, gosh. Too much of everything. I need to start cleaning some of it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> I have a lot of books, for sure. <laughs> do you believe in days off? And if so, how do you celebrate them? Days off, mm -hmm. yes.
Yes, I'm retired now, so every day is an off day for me. <laughs> <laughs> done it well, done it well. <laughs> yes. And and how would you say you fill your cup on a mental level? When you're stressed out, you're burnt out, how do you put yourself recentered to take on the day? Um, what I do when I'm as I am now, I've worked in a yard for two days. Uh, I love to take a nice warm bath and just relax. Uh, at least one whole day. Yeah, that that's perfect, actually. <laughs> I'm taking notes as we speak. <laughs> well, uh, Jacqueline, thank you so much for your time, for being on the show. I, I understand that that you are just uh, a wealth of knowledge and life stories. And definitely, if you're listening to me right now, books, original poems, and memoirs are available now alongside the Great Depression Mental Health. But if someone wanted to connect with you or contact you, how do they go about doing that? Um, they could contact me on Facebook. Uh, the full name there is Jacqueline Brown is my maiden name, Ivy. Um, they could contact me there. Um, and if they would like to purchase the books, um, the Great Depression could be bought from Dorrance, a bookstore, as well as Amazon. And other books are to be sent to uh, Books a Million. Um, and there's one more uh, place I can't remember. I, maybe those are they, uh, the, the three places, unless um, my cup publishing company sent it to some other place. Yeah. You know, so fine books are sold. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for being on the program. I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was fun being with you. <laughs> thank you very much. Well,